Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC meeting this year. The title of my presentation is Stent Crush Upside Down, a rare complication in a Medina 001 lesion. And these are my disclosures. I present the case of a 71-year-old male patient with hypertension and dyslipidemia. He had an anterolateral ischemia based on a two-vessel disease with left dominance. The cartoon shows uh, the lesions that were present, which were a LAD 75% mid lesion and a first diagonal, which was chronically occluded, and a second diagonal, which had an osseal high, sten high grade stenosis of 85%. Here again, you see the angiography where you can appreciate the just mentioned lesions with a LAD 75 mid lesion, a first diagonal which was chronically occluded, and a second diagonal with an osseal lesion of 85% at least. And I, I rewired the occluded first diagonal with an anti-grade wire and then predilated the mid-LAD lesion with a 3.5-15 semi-compliant balloon then decided to implant a Synergy Megatron 4020 covering the bifurcation of the first diagonal branch. We then wired the second diagonal branch and predilated that one with a 1512 semi-compliant balloon. And due to impaired flow and a dissection at the ostium of the diagonal branch, I decided to implant a Synergy 2.58 drop-eluting stent at the ostium of the second diagonal branch. But then, unfortunately, I saw this image uh, which showed a flipped and upside-down proximal piece of the stent in the diagonal branch and uh, show you here on this cartoon what exactly happened. Because the Synergy is a two connector design stent, it is very likely to get distorted when floating in the proximal main vessel. And this is what happened here while retrieving the first balloon, the stent somehow got flipped upside down into the distal main branch of the bifurcation. Here you can see clear stand life, which is a special feature of our new Siemens Econol floor uh, angiography machine that we have. And it actually it combines eight images live and enhances the stand and makes it very visible. And you can appreciate that the first wire uh, going into the main branch is actually behind uh, the stand structs which is obvious because um, it was wired previously and then uh, the sticks and was implanted into the diagonal branch. But at that point, I didn't want to crush the stent because I thought I could just rewire through the stent lumen and then over expand it in order to accommodate the distal main branch and leave it as such. So here you can see the rewiring which I think, or I know that the wire was going through the true lumen of the stent. You just wiggle the wire a little bit and makes it, it facilitates to go through the lumen or you can also uh, try with the loop wire. I then placed the balloon inside the prolapsed fragment and post dilated it with a three zero semi-compliant balloon up to 20 atmospheres. And then I post dilated it with a 4-0 uh, non-compliant balloon, but you can actually appreciate that the balloon is very much strangulated by the prolapsed piece of the stent. And I was uh, unable, even with uh, 24 atmospheres, I was unable to completely over expand this 2.5 synergy stent. And if we go back to the board, uh, we can see that the Synergy 2.5 uh, should be over expandable to 5 millimeter, according to the paper of the Jarrell and um, also Nicolas Foin. 
So there's three different uh, synergy platforms, a small vessel, a workhorse, and a large vessel. And the two smaller ones, the small and the workhorse should go up to five millimeters according to this paper. But in this case, it did not even expand up to, up to four uh, at 14 atmospheres and also at 24 um, later on. OCT actually showed the stent diameter be below three millimeters. So that was kind of surprising to me. And um, then I looked at the angiographic result, which would, looked really, really good, but I knew that the stand is not expanded. So that you can also see some residual contrast staying at the opposite side of the side branch, indicating that there's turbulent flow and it's also a shadow of the stent um, suggests that you that the stand is not really opposed to the wall. And that's exactly the point where you should go and do intracoronary imaging with, um, with OCT or IBIS. However, I was unable to bring the OCT catheter down, most likely to do wire bias and the proximal stent. And I decided to use a guide extension and to bring that in. But as you can appreciate here, I just moved the guide extension through the stent, which was uh, possible without resistance. But then the stent at the proximal end got longitudinally distorted. And here, um, I just want to remind you of longitudinal stent compression, which is a complication that was first discovered in 12, 2012 with the Promus element design, which was a two connector design. And the Synergy Megatron has thicker struts and also additional links. Uh, it has three links throughout the body and four links at the, at the proximal two uh, hoops to prevent actually LAC. Um, but as you can appreciate in this case with very bulky equipment, such as guide extension catheters, you can still cause longitudinal compressions. And uh, as we know, longitudinal stent compression is a function of numbers of longitudinal connectors and the Synergy Megatron has three and thicker struts so it has a much higher resistance against longitudinal compression. However, it is still not spare from that complication. So here you can see what happened to the proximal end of the Megatron. Well, it got distorted and I used um, another method to actually pass the guide uh, liner, which was a balloon assisted tracking technique or also inchworming. And that's something you should definitely use in order to pass a previously implanted stent, especially in large vessels to prevent LAC from happening. So here you can see that you put the balloon, you inflate it, and while deflating it, you actually advance um, the guide extension, and that's uh, going to prevent the stent from being distorted. So I use then uh, the OCT catheter further distal to actually control for the rewiring. And after a few attempts, I was able to eccentrically rewire the stent. And that's what you can appreciate here. You see the struts being around the OCT catheter and also cartooned on the left and the right side on, on different uh, heights of the prolapse stent. So here you see the OCT catheter going in easily by uh, facilitated by a guide extension catheter. I then uh, dilated or crushed the prolapse stent to the wall on the side of the side branch. And it used, I used a 3-0 balloon and then uh, decided to implant a 4-0 Synergy uh, 20 adjacent to the Megatron, crossing the bifurcation and basically performing a crush the uh, crush stand technique upside down, leaving the shoulder of the bifurcation or the shoulder of the side branch uncovered in that kind of bailout technique. Then rewiring the struts into the side branch and performed a kissing balloon and then a final pot with a 4-0 in a proximal segment. And then 
uh, OCT again, which confirmed the three layers of struts of the crushed prolapsed side branch stand actually distal to the um, bifurcation, which you can see here. So uh, follow the OCT drawback and you can see three layers now, then the carina and then on the proximal end, there is only one layer of stent, which is upside down from what you would expect in a DK crush technique. Just let it run one more time. Three layers at 12 o'clock, then the carina here, and then the proximal part with only one layer of stents. So, and then I also did a pot for the longitudinal distorted proximal end of the synergy. And you can appreciate clear stand life again, really nicely showing the struts of the Megatron and the final result, final angiographic result should run here. Um, the first diagonal is small and was chronically occluded and very nicely stented main branch and the diagonal I think is also a feasible result. And of course the stent in the distal branch of the second bifurcation is completely opposed to the vessel wall. So here again OCT for the proximal end of the uh, Megatron where the longitudinal compression happened. And what is important is that you post dilated and make sure that all the struts are now opposed to the wall. And you can see here nicely uh, well expanded stent with all the post struts all to the end, the proximal end, which is here. So lessons learned for me are uh, that whenever you have this complication, which is rare, I never had that before, uh, just crush the prolapse stand to the side in the first place, because you already have the wire there, you just pass with a balloon, you crush it to the side and you can uh, put another stand on top of it, just as I did at the end. And don't try to rewire, rewire the true lumen especially if it is a small uh, sized stent, which is not overexpanded. And also make sure you know the table of Nicolas Foix on overexpansion. However, in this case, I think uh, for the 2.5 synergy, the num five millimeter is not accurate. Then whenever you have a complication with stent, use intravascular imaging to better understand what happened and to guide your bailout strategy. Whenever you have a small side branch, just do plain old balloon dilatation for the side branch, keep it simple. However, in this case, I had a dissection with limiting flow, so I, I had to bail out with a stent. And next time I would probably use OCT or IVUS to guide the stand placement at the side branch ostium up front. You can also use a Sabo technique to retain the stand at the ostium, which is a very nice technique, a little bit uh, more preparation, but it's, uh, it's an option. Or do a correct two stand strategy up front with tap or culotte, which at the end saves time. And uh, last but not least, the Synergy Megatron is not spared from longitudinal compression, although it's a much more rigid stent, but with bulky equipment such as guide extension catheters, you can still deform the stent. Thank you very much for your attention.